Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. In this video, I'll be doing a paper test and sharing my first impressions of this Loistrom 1917 journal. This is the black dotted journal from their 120G collection, which features 120 GSM paper. I've actually grown to appreciate 80 GSM paper, but I'm really excited to try this thicker paper out with you. Before we get started, I want to mention that I do still have a code active with the US Loistrom site. You can use Randy10 to save 10% off your order. If you're interested in starting a journal or a bullet journal, I highly recommend checking out their products. Okay, so moving into this review. The first thing to note is that this is quite a substantial notebook. Um, it's an A5 size notebook and it's about three quarters of an inch thick, fresh out of the shrink wrap. It is a bit thicker than the regular A5 hardcover journal and almost twice the thickness of a softcover, but that's pretty impressive since it holds 203 numbered pages. The pages still have that nice creamy off-white color that's easy on the eyes, but it's thicker and really smooth with low transparency, unlike the shadow prone paper in the regular Loisterms. Prior to filming this, I strategically picked out a bunch of different writing utensils to test on this new thick paper. I knew that I wanted to sample my typical go-to products, but I thought it would be helpful to also show you what some of the more popular pens and markers of the planner community look like in here. I sampled all of the instruments on a page of 80 GSM paper from one of my dot grid journals, and that's another thing to note, this notebook does not offer the perforated pages at the end like the regular journals do, but I don't really mind that. I don't typically rip pages out of my bound books. Anyway, as you can tell, there is a lot of ghosting going on on that sheet of paper. I know a lot of people don't like the shadowing and ghosting, but I personally don't mind it. Um, I actually prefer it. I prefer thinner paper and ghosting because it helps the journal pick up character faster and I just really love a used lived-in notebook and I don't care for perfect pristine pages. But I do know that a lot of people don't share that same desire with a journal. Um, so for my favorites, these are the utensils that I always have with me for my bullet journal and knowing how they are in my regular journals, I knew they would perform well on this paper and I am very satisfied with how they do work. Um, also in my favorites are some of the pens that I use in my journal. My journal is currently a lined soft cover from Loistrom. I have this pen from the company. I don't know how to pronounce the name of it. Sorry about that, but I really like it. It's a gel pen. And I also like using the Pilot G2s, which write very smoothly on this paper. And I know I have a video up talking about how Pilot G2s are trash, but they're actually working really well for me in my journals, and I'm definitely eating my words here. Next up, we have some fine liners. If you know me, you know that I don't enjoy using a fine liner as my everyday pen, um, but they are very handy for drawing layouts for my bullet journal. Um, and I do have plans to use this notebook as a bullet journal sometime in 2022. So I thought testing them out would be helpful and I actually really like that this paper holds the thick 08 pen so well. Next, we have my favorite kind of pen to use on any kind of paper, the black gel pen. All of these, except for the first one, has a 0.5 millimeter nib. Um, I think this is the trickiest part of putting a video like this together because you might be tempted to ask, well, how's the smearing in the dry time? But this isn't a pen test video, it's a paper test video. So personally, I'd use any of these pens in this notebook as far as the ghosting and the bleed through is concerned because there isn't any of that but the dry time and smearing depends on your preferences and comfort level. And then we have some brush pens. Of course, I featured the planner favorites, the Tombow Fudonoskes, even though I personally don't care for them as beginner um, lettering pens, but that can be a whole separate video. I'm doing the lettering of the soft tip in real time, just so you can get a sense of my lettering. I, I don't know, I thought that would be cool to show, I guess. Um, this is how I letter with the words in an upright position versus the slanted that I typically use in my bullet journal. Everyone has their own way of lettering, and this isn't a lettering how-to video, but a tip that I like to give 
is to lift the pen after every stroke. It doesn't work for everyone, not everyone does it, but it works for me, so I just thought I'd share that in case you were looking for a pointer or something. I'll admit, um, brush pens are pretty tricky when you're first starting out with them, but uh, to get better, I just recommend practicing a lot. I think the important part of learning to letter is getting comfortable with the instrument that you're using. Eventually you'll get comfortable, the lettering will become easier, flow a little better, and you'll actually enjoy what you're putting down on the paper. And if you're able to, I also recommend trying out different brush pens, um, just because, you know, a certain pen might work for someone, but that doesn't mean it will necessarily work for you. I also did some plain swatches of brush markers that I don't typically letter with and I went over them twice just to see how they would hold up on the paper and I'm so impressed. There's not a hint of bleed through at all with these pens which is kind of crazy. They're so black <laughs> and inky um, so that's pretty cool. Sorry if you can hear my air conditioning, it just kicked back on, but um, now I have some highlighters and markers to show you. I don't know where my yellow Stabilo is, so I just used the pink one. They're all about the same inkiness. Um, I have some fluorescent Sharpie highlighters, more dot markers, and actually from this video I've learned that I don't like the pastel dot marker singles on cream paper. Sounds weird, but they're just kind of too faint on this paper that they look like water spots in my opinion and I'm not really into that look so noted for next time um, I also swatched a ton of different gray markers since gray is pretty popular um, in planning and journaling and also some yellows and browns just to show some more medium and dark colors on this paper Next up, I have some Zebra Mild Liners, another fan favorite. I'm actually softening up to these, and I like that they hold up really well on this paper. There's none of that pooling um, and ghosting and bleeding onto the other side, so that's really nice. And finally, we have this pack of 10 Crayola Multicultural Color Markers. I know these are gaining a lot of popularity in the planner and journaling communities, so I wanted to include them. And should be no surprise at this point, these held up very well on this paper. So looking at these pages next to the ADGSM paper, I'm so impressed. I think this 120G notebook is a really great middle ground notebook that would work for anyone. It's definitely steps up from ADGSM paper, but it isn't quite like 160 cardstocky paper that could be too much for some people. 
and that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it or found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to and don't forget to use my discount code if you're shopping with the us Lordstrom site and i will talk to you in the next one bye